Hey, Dave, how are you doing? Good, good morning. Good. Hey, good morning, Slizzy. So, uh, Garth, we're excited. Tickets for your show in Louisville go on sale tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock Eastern. First time in 18 years you're coming back to Louisville. And uh, I got a little bone to pick with you, though, man. <laughs> okay, let's, let's start it out. We're going to start, start it out like that. I'm, I'm known to make arch nemesis, <laughs> by the way. Um, we're in Evansville, a couple hours away. You used to play here all the time. You couldn't fit us in your schedule? You had to go to Louisville? Oh, man, what a great place. <laughs> I'm the same. I'm yeah. saying. And I hear you guys. I hear you guys built a new one about ten years ago, maybe. Yep. Yep. Well, yeah. Do Do you yeah. remember? I think the city sent you the ticket window from the old Robert Stadium because you sold out yes, in, 90, in '93. Uh, the city sent you that, so you couldn't give us any love, right? You couldn't maybe come over that Sunday, <laughs> the tenth. You know what? I I haven't seen the full tour roster yet. They don't tell me because I would blab <laughs> there it. There you go. Just uh, some of the best memories I've had are there, man. That was fun. Yeah. Now, I mean, yeah, Robert Stadium. They tore that down. We had the Four Center here now, but I mean, so what? What was your favorite part about Evansville when you would come through town? You know, my favorite part actually started before I ever got there. I drove out of my gate one morning, and there was the there was the morning crew from Evansville broadcasting live from right outside my driveway. Really? And <laughs> that's how we ended up getting there anyway. Was yeah. a petition that was going on, and uh, just loved it. One of the greatest one of the greatest times I've ever had. Well, I think what our police chief too is a huge fan of yours. Yeah, man, those, those guys are fun. They do the the annual guns and hoses. Uh, thing all the time and uh they do it for a great cause just good good guys well i got another bone to pick with you too guys because guns and hoses that ninth as well <laughs> so you, you had to do a 10th show you had to come play the 10th yeah, we now need more play. shows yes <laughs> i'm just i'm not trying to pressure you or anything guard but we need a couple more shows buddy <laughs> i'm running out of bones <laughs> Uh, but no, we're real excited and everything, and uh, you know we're looking forward to it. So you're coming back here, you're on tour again, and you're—I mean—you're selling out stadiums, you're breaking records left and right. You picked up the uh, ACM Entertainer of the Year. I mean, how special is it to be back on the road and just going back to all these fans and getting all that love again and giving all the love back to them? Man, it, it, it feels unbelievable, you know. And 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 I've said this, so forgive myself for repeating myself, but I thought I was grateful in the '90s. I really did. I I, I thought I. I thought I was, you know, very aware of what was going on and felt very lucky to be there. With that said, this tour is blowing the 90s away, man. Yeah. I, I've never been on anything like this. Just the number of people that are showing up, the attitude in which they're showing up, and then the ages, you know, half that arena. Ticketmaster telling us that half the arena, you know, was 10 years old or not even born yet last time we were touring. So this is, it's, it's pretty cool to see the faces you hoped you'd see again. And then here's this whole new breed of music lovers that know every word to every song. It's pretty cool. Well, you know, and speaking of that, you, I feel like personally for me, you're there at my parties. Uh, you yeah. are there at any time. I, uh, you know, with the dance or mom, you're there for those moments in my life. And I think a lot of people feel that way. And I just want to thank you for being kind of the, the voice of not only my generation, but the new generation, too, who is discovering all your music now because of this tour. It's, it's very sweet. I got to tell you, you're, you're hitting every night of my life right on the head, man. It's, it's really cool. You look out, you see these faces, and then getting to do this, knowing that your babies are healthy and on their way, so you're not missing anything at home, and you're touring with the love of your life. It's just uh, Garth Brooks is the luckiest guy on the planet. Yeah, and we're looking forward to it. We actually put on Facebook, we had some uh, listeners wanted to ask some questions. So Sherry posted oh, on, yeah, on Facebook, she goes, you know, meeting you would be on her bucket list. To, uh, go to the show to meet you. She wants to know what's on the top of your bucket list. I mean, because I'm sure you cross off a bunch of them already in your life. So <laughs> do you have anything left on your bucket list? You know, it's crazy, man. I've never had a bucket list. Never have. I mean, I, I, I get to do this for a living. So I can't imagine anything. You know, I'm like every dad. You just want help for your kids. Yeah. But I guess if I had one thing on that bucket list, it would be to just keep getting to do what I'm doing right now. Because this gig never lasts forever. There's never been an artist that it does last forever for. And just uh, just enjoying it. And that would be my one way. Uh, let me ask you a question, Garth. We had our, our question today. We're having a debate in the studio. You're a parent. Do you get your kids Valentine's Day presents? Um, no, I'm, I'm not that guy. I'm not the Thank guy you. that does the Easter presents either. You know, I just – but uh, but Valentine's, yeah, I – my girls were always so sweet. I I thought it'd be square if they got roses from their dad, you know, on Valentine's yeah, Day. But they all you. three said, 
shoot, I love roses, you know, from me. So every Valentine's Day, they get roses. No, that's nice. Very cool. So uh, we're looking forward to it. It's a great time. And, uh, you know, it's coming up. Tickets on sale. And, and uh, again, we have another question on Facebook. Uh, Linda wanted to chime in. She wants to know what's your favorite hobby? Um, I love working on the farm. Uh, but my favorite hobby has to be eating Miss Yearwood's recipes. That's probably oh, <laughs> yeah. my, my new favorite. And, oh, my God, it shows. But, man, what? That, that gal, she's got it all together. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. You got another question, Lizzie? Well, I know you you had an idea. You wanted to ask him something about his phone. Well, that's right. And uh, we're playing a little something game. About my what? Did you say song, hopefully? No, no, phone. Oh, your no, phone. No. He, oh, my phone. Your, All he, I heard was song. And song. I, couldn't, I couldn't, couldn't figure that one what, out. What's your, next, what's your next single that's going to be released? Tell us before anybody else. Since you brought up well, you you know song. Uh, it's crazy because we were in the studio until about 2 this morning. And, uh, you know, the people that are that kind of – kind of uh, check in on what we do <laughs> are getting ready to get a letter from me kind of explaining that this whole tour has been kind of real enlightening for me. Yeah. And uh, when we came back, I really didn't trust my own pen songwriting wise. So there wasn't a lot of gar stuff on, on this album. And that's kind of been the one thing that people get, keep saying is, Hey man, where's the gar stuff? Yeah. And so we, we've kind of holed up in a wall now for about four months running another four months. We'll be, uh, in the studio, just writing and writing and writing, probably writing more than I ever have, and and just uh, cutting stuff. And it's it's fun. Well, you know, the people will decide whether it's any good or not. But right, to right now, man, I'm having a great time. That's awesome. And Garth, I'm kind of known as a great uh, a karaoke singer here at the station. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, sure so yes. If you need some help with friends in low places, if you're going to do a reboot, I know you want to get Keith Urban and stuff like that, but if you want to use me, I, I'll be uh, more than happy to help you, you out. You don't. <laughs> hey, consider it done. There, there, you, go. Go. there you go. Oh, don't say that. I didn't have this ruined your next like album, Garth. <laughs> I know. We do have a question about your phone. I like to ask because you, we have a little bet going. I'm not going to tell you to bet until you answer the question. Who's the most famous person you have on your contact list in your phone? Oh, my, my most famous person for me. Yeah. Now, yeah. that's different than the most famous person, <laughs> but, man, I got to tell you, uh, when you get a text or send a text to the king, when you're talking to George Strait, uh, that's, pretty, yeah. that's pretty freaking cool. Nice. <laughs> we, I was close. I think we, I, I might have lost that bet. I, I said you had a former U.S. president in your phone. Oh, uh, well, yeah. yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's, it's, I got it's, it. Yes. Whatever. <laughs> You're very lucky to get to hang with that man yeah. right there. He's, a, he's an angel down here walking among us. So it's, that's a pretty cool relationship to have. He's sweet. And his wife, they're both just great people. And they're, you know, I think he's 90. I think she's approaching 90 pretty yeah. quick. So and they still get out there and, and outwork you and do everything. That, you know, if, if there's a human on the on the earth that you would like to be, uh, you know, former President Jimmy Carter might be that guy. Just sweet man. Can, can we call him? No, Dave, no. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, let me let me do my best Jimmy impersonation for you here. Yeah, yeah, just tell me some peanuts from the peanut farm. Well, guys, um, we're so looking forward no. you to coming to town. It's going to be an amazing time. <laughs> April 9th, tickets go on sale tomorrow. And, and if you can squeeze in Evansville, my man, I, I might be able to get you a police escort. I, I know some people <laughs> high up that are big fans of yours. <laughs> I've got a lot of police escorts, just not for the right reason. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Look, I want to tell you real quick. Um, there yes, was ma'am. someone on Facebook who said that you have always been, she has the utmost respect for you. You've always been a role model for her. Her name is Karen. And especially when you were going through your divorce and how you put family first. And for me personally, I also went through a divorce. And the way you were with your ex-wife and put your kids first, that's what my ex-husband and I did. And it's oh, it's turned out remarkable. And it's because of the lesson that you taught us all. And I want to thank you for that, too. That's very sweet. I will pass that on to Sandy. Yes. And uh, Trisha, it's been, a, it's been a great triangle. Never, never wishing that upon somebody, but i got to tell you, Having three girls and three parents worked out really well for us. And yes. that's just that's very lucky. You can never have too much love, can you? Amen. <laughs> Thanks, Amen. Garth. We appreciate it, Thanks, buddy. Thanks, Garth. Bye. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. You too. I can't wait to see you and hug your neck. It's going to be fun. <laughs>